on the 14th day of Elul happens to be this year that it falls on Parashat Kititze. And Kititze always falls on, on the month of Elul. Kititze is the parasha that we're talking about going out to war. We mentioned that the war is against the Yetzer Ara. And uh, what else it means about in regards to the, Yetzer, the fight with the Yetzer Ara. But nevertheless, Parashat Kititze always will fall on, on uh, Elul. And this year it worked in Ashgaha Prati, that on the 14th day of Elul it fell exactly on Kititze. Now, in general, the kititze means kititze la milchama, that you have to go out to war. Who do you, who do you fight with? Then you fight against the Yetzir Ara. Now, the Ariya Kadosh gives a very in, interesting interpretation and a, and a beautiful explanation. This can be found in the, the Kitvei Ari, what's called, called Shara Kavanot. One of them is called the Drush of Pesach, and he explains there something very interesting. It says that the soul has to go out of the klipot. Our soul fell down into this world and right away falls into the klipot. And the klipa is something that is very dirty. It's a dirty husk, almost like falling into the mud. So when the, the soul comes out of the klipa, then it has to be cleaned. I always give different uh, examples with different movies. So there is a movie that we quote a lot and many people see, The Matrix. If you remember, when they, so to say, uh, uh, woke up Neo, there's a beginning, he's like, kind of like sleeping in some of this uh, cocoon, then the machine is like taking him out, and he falls into like this uh, big uh, 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 barrel of like, kind of like slum, and he takes him out. You remember the whole scene? You don't have to now repeat. But that's a perfect example. And that's the, the, the bodies, are, uh, the souls, are constantly in this klipa, and when it's taken out of the klipa, this is signifying when the person decides to do tshuva. Now I decide to do tshuva, okay, so the, the soul is taken out of the klipa, out of the dirt, but now it's full of dirt. Now what you have to do is start cleaning it. Now this is, a, we can relate with all of us. All of us are either a baal tshuva, or either born into the world of Torah, but still got dirty, everybody's about tshuva, even the people who were born in the most observant families, they also have to do tshuva. Needless to say, when a person is converting through at some point in their life, but at some point the neshama has to be pulled out of the klipa. Now even if you take a very observant individual, he does mitzvot, learns Torah, but then he fails, everybody fails, there's no such thing that nobody will fail. There's no such a thing that a person, even a tzaddik, that will not uh, 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 fail. The reason why we fail is that we have the opportunity to do tshuva. But nevertheless, now you have to clean the dirt. So the verse in the Parashat Kititze says, Kititze la milchama aloivecha, when you go out to war on your enemy, your enemy is the Yetzer Ara, that is out to get you. Then it says something very interesting that the man who goes out to war sees an attractive woman and he desires her. Now, what the Torah is telling me now, a person is now uh, busy in a war. You're all dirty, seeing people dying left and right. You need to conquer land. That's what interests you. In the middle of the battlefield, you see a beautiful woman. And suddenly, you, that's what you're thinking of. Uh, we're in the middle of a war, I'm thinking now of this woman. V'chashaktaba, and you desired her. One, when you stop for a second and thinking of the parasha, what's going on here? You know, I was a soldier in war. You don't think of beautiful women while you're in a battle. Well, maybe some do when you go into a certain uh, situation. But when you're thinking about it, the Torah is telling me I'm going out to war. Why is he now telling me if you're going again to the example of the matrix, so this is corresponding to the woman in the red dress. The, this is v'chashaktaba. Uh, but nevertheless, to say very quickly, what does it mean based on the Ariya Kadosh, is that the Neshama is stuck in Klipot. And we all have our Neshama stuck in a Klipa. A klipa is a husk or a negative energy or a spiritual filth. I call it a spiritual bacteria, a spiritual uh, disease. Uh, but because it multiplies as you feed it. But nevertheless, now we live our life and I don't realize I have a neshama. But sometimes in my life I desire something. Now when I desire something, it means there's a godly spark in that thing that is so to say calling me like a magnet. If I desire food 
or anything, then it means that something is there, a godly spark that I'm like pulled to it, and that's why I'm pulled to that. Our sages of Kabbalah explain that why does a man, when he sees a woman that is attractive and not modest, right away is attracted to her and he has not pure thoughts and he thinking of all sorts of things, not because the person is filthy, dirty or disgusting, rather the soul of the woman comes from a very high place and she has a spark of the Shekhinah, of the feminine aspect of the divine and he's pulled to that, not to the physical body. What is pulling him is the desire to be close to the Shekhinah. Happens to be that it's dressed now in a woman so he doesn't see the Shekhinah, he doesn't feel the Shekhinah. The Shekhinah means the feminine aspect of the divine. Rather, he sees the body, so he thinks he's, tra he's uh, is, uh, 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 attracted to the body. So that's with everything. You walk in the street, suddenly you see something that you like, because there's a godly spark in it that belongs to you. If it's food that you desire, why do you like oranges and he likes potatoes? Or you like chocolate and you like vanilla? because there's some, some connection in the godly sparks that enlivens that piece of food that is connected to you, that you have to elevate that spark. So I'm, I'm, so to say, attracted to that. Now, when I see something that is familiar to me, I will be attracted to it. So when I re finally figure out that I have an neshama in my body, that I'm attracted to that, and I desire that. So the Torah says, V'chashakta ba, you desire, you, you desire to pull the neshama out to the surface. That's when you have some, uh, what's called hiruwei tshuva. You live your life for 40 years, suddenly, pitom, you don't want to steal anymore. Pitom, suddenly you don't want to, you don't want to commit adultery or whatever. You feel bad, what's, uh, what is called in our generation a conscience. Suddenly, what happened suddenly? Why? Because the soul got a little bit of boost. Nevertheless, so I now have to reveal the neshama. How do I reveal the neshama? Then I have to bring it up to the surface. So what does the Torah says? When you see a beautiful woman, when you go out to war, you see a beautiful woman. Who's this beautiful woman? It's your soul, it's your neshama. Vechashaktaba, and you desired her, then you have a strong desire to do tshuva. Each and every one of us. Why do you think we're blowing out now the shofar? Shup, suddenly you get a zbeng to your neshama. The other day you saw here, we had a, a, in, a man here, made Aliyah, came from Oregon, and uh, he heard Shofar for his first time in his life. Now this person is a Kohen, and it happened to be that the one who blew the Shofar, this was done in the middle of Slichot, the one that blew the Shofar was also a Kohen with the same name. The person almost uh, fainted here. First time he heard a Shofar in his life. We had a whole episode here, had to call the EMS, and it was not, uh, it was, uh, not so convenient. I mean, not, not convenient, it was scary, the guy suddenly falling on the floor. What happened? He heard Shafar for the first time in his life. His whole neshama was sh shaken. Nevertheless, so sometimes something happens to us and you wake up and you have this strong desire. I'm so sure it happened to you at least once in your life that you're saying, that's it. I'm changing, I'm not doing this anymore. You have this, some type of a hit or root, a desire to make a huge change. This is the, what the Torah says, the, when you see a woman in the battlefield and you desire her, that's your soul. Now what does it say? You take this woman into your house and you let her sit in your house for a whole month. And the first thing that she needs to do is to cut her hair off. And then she has to uh, uh, do her nails. Or it says, Rashi says she has to uh, grow them. Now, not to do a manicure. Manicure makes the nails look nice. Astai uh, Tzipornea, Rashi says, let her grow the nails wild. With dirt under the nails, and one nail is like this, and one nail is broken. Why? She titnabel be'enecha, that she's not going to look good in your eyes. Can you imagine, first you desired her, then you shaved her head. Ooh, I'm not too sure I'm uh, into this right now. And the hands are dirty, the nails are dirty. What does that mean to us? I mean, we are, want to take the verses in the Torah and apply it into our life. To take the hair down and to make the nails dirty means to take off the things in my, in my life that are extras, that I don't really need. In Hebrew it's called mutarot. So how many things in your life you don't really need? Some people, they, uh, they uh, all day long, gnashing on chocolates, cookies, whatever. You don't really need it. 
Some people, they, they, uh, they spoil themselves with all sorts of things, whatever it is. I don't want to chas v'shalom step on people's toes. But in Hebrew it's called mutarot. Mutarot is things in my life that I don't really need. Why do you need that? Not too long ago, somebody that I know bought a very expensive car. Tell me, why do you need this expensive car? You can uh, do with a regular car and the rest of the money give to tzedakah. So, this is one example out of many. But mutarot is the things that I don't need. And you have to uh, recognize in your life, what are the things that you don't need? Do you need seven suits? I have one suit. This is enough. I don't need seven suits. One for Monday, one for Tuesday, one for Tuesday, uh, Wednesday. One suit, two suits. You have to live uh, comfortably, and that's it. Now, why? Why do you want to get rid of the things that you don't really need in your life? Because that, that's where the Yetzirah catches you. I told you not once and not twice. I don't want to repeat it now 17 times with my habits with coffee. I like coffee. I don't like using the word addicted. I'm not addicted to coffee and not addicted to anything. But I have weakness to coffee. So I don't have coffee at 6 o'clock in the morning. I have my first cup of coffee at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Because do I really need the coffee? Is it nutritional? Is it nu there's nutrition in there. It helps me start the day. There's no nutrition in there. It's my own physical desire, my own physical uh, pleasure. There's nothing healthy in coffee. I know some people will argue it's good to have coffee, whatever it is. It's not, it's not good for you first thing in the morning to have coffee or a cookie. But this is called mutarot. Do you really need a cup of coffee? No, you want it. This is a teava. It's good taste. It tastes good. So why do you need to have 10 cups of coffee? One is enough. Two. And after, if, if, you, if I won't put breaks on my desire, I will have 10 cups of coffee a day. No question. I will have coffee after coffee after coffee. I like it. So how do I get rid of this mutarot, of these extras? Instead of having it at 6 o'clock in the morning, and 7 o'clock in the morning, and 8 o'clock in the morning, and 9 o'clock in the morning. So I have it at 12. Two, four, one. And if I really want another one, then I, no, I don't need another one. I'll have another one tomorrow. Why? Because if I let go too much on something that is permitted and easy, that's where the Yetzirah catches you. Where you're not thinking that it's so important or so big. So you want to get rid of this, uh, this uh, mutarot. And again, in English there's not really a word to that. I would call it the things that you don't really need. The excesses or extras or things that you can say to yourself, do I really need this right now? Sometimes you go into a, a store, you buy the essentials, you buy bread, you buy milk, you buy whatever you need to eat. But then you see the cookie here and the wafers and the chocolate, do you really need it? No, don't need to, don't, don't need to, I don't need it right now. Next, it says about the lady, the attractive lady that the soldier sees, that he trapped her, shvuya. She becomes now like a captive. What does that mean to us? And this is all what I'm saying now is what Dariya Kadosh says in Sarah Kavanot, in Drosh Pesach. It says, this is all the bad habits that I have. Now you need to look at all the bad habits that you have and how, which ones can I uh, get rid of. Some people will say, my bad habits is smoking. Another person will say, my bad habits is alcohol. Another person will say, my bad habits is gambling. Whatever it is, we all have bad habits. Sometimes the bad habit can be something very, very small. But we all have bad habits. There's no such a thing that a person has bad habits. Now in the month of Elul, on the 14th day of Elul, when I need to do tshuva, then what do I need to get rid of? I need to get rid of, first of all, all these extras that I don't need. The more you put yourself on a spiritual diet, the stronger you become. The more you know how to handle little things, then the big things come easy. If I know how to handle my cup of coffee, instead of having five cups of coffee, I have one. And when I have this desire now to have a cup of coffee, I tell myself, no, it's only a cup of coffee, I'll have another one tomorrow. Then when it comes to the big things, then I know how to handle it. Next thing that I need to do is I have to recognize all the bad habits in my life. Some people, their bad habits is to sit on Facebook for three hours. What do you gain on being on Facebook for three hours? Go there for five minutes, see the posts, see the news, do what you need to do, and get off. But after a while, it's a re repetitive cycle. This is also a bad habit. And you use your own imagination, what is your bad habit? Now part of the tshuva is that I have to bring my lifestyle to a healthy lifestyle that I don't get controlled by my bad habits. That's a big part in my tshuva. For example, I'll give you an example. One of the pillars in our Torah is of course our father Avraham Avinu. Avraham Avinu, we don't know much about his life. We know that he was born. And boom, he becomes 75 years old and Lech Lecha Where was he 75 years old? 
Can you imagine what, what went through in his life? Where was our father? Avraham Avinu. So this Midrashim that explains what and how and what, but nevertheless, <coughs> the first time we are acquainted with Avraham Avinu is Lech Lecha. Lech Lecha Me'artzecha, leave your land, go from your artziyut, your, your mundane things, your physical habits. Lech Lecha Me'artzecha is not necessarily go out of your land. It's go out of these physical, physical habits that are controlling you. Now, and what is these physical habits? This, this is called Chayei Ha'olam Azeh. The life of, the, of this world, physical life. And Avraham Avinu represents, go out of this physical life. You have to recognize where your soul is trapped in physical habits. And then, that, then you have to leave from it. So this is exactly what it's talking about. Now, when I have a bad habit, how do you call it in a, the simple language? You call it my nature. Oh, it's my nature. No, it's not such a thing. Some people say, oh, he's lazy. That's his nature. No, that's not his nature. That's a bad habit. He sleeps till 11. That's his nature. No, it's a bad habit. So the hergelim raim, the bad habits, this is nature. Now you have to break this nature. You have to break and change his bad habits. And by that, what are you doing? Then you're winning the war. So when you go out to war, the war can be against the Yetzirah, but the war is also, oh, there's a party outside. Another bad habit, but nevertheless, but nevertheless, the the war is to fight my bad habits and to break it. And when I'm able to fight the bad habits and to break it, then I have to create new habits. How about you create a new habit that you go to the mikveh every day at five o'clock in the morning? That's a good habit to acquire. How about you make yourself a good habit and start learning Torah once a day for one hour? And I know what. I have even a better habit for you. Say Birkat Amazon every day. Do an act of kindness. That's good habits. You have to break the bad habits and add new habits. Now I know I'm calling it now habits. It's mitzvot. It's not habits. It's commandments from the Torah. But when you do something as a habit, then you do it diligently. Yes, it's a mitzvah. But better to have a, a, a habit to go to the mikveh every day and to some people say, no, you want me to go. It's 15 minutes walk this way, 15 minutes walk back. And, and everybody finds excuses. But when it comes to sit on Facebook for a whole, hour, a whole hour, then no, no, that's okay. I'm being educated and there's videos there and I need to see what's going on in the world right now. And there's a lot of rabbis on uh, Facebook. And then you give excuses to the bad habits. So the point you take from, uh, from what we're saying here now is you have to get rid of the bad habits and you have to fight them like a war and you have to acquire right away good habits. If you get rid of a bad habit and you right away don't replace it with a good habit, it's not going to work. It has to be right away something that replaces it. Because if it's not going to replace it, then the bad habit will continue coming. Because there's a void there. If you fill the void with a good habit, you're good to go. So this is the milchama, this is the war that we have to go out to. Especially now in the month of Elul. So I have to know how to fight all these bad habits in me, my lifestyle, and acquire a totally different lifestyle. Zad Hashem should be successful in uh, not only getting rid of the bad habits, having the awareness to find out this is a bad habit, this is something that is not good for me, this is something that is extra, but the key is that you have to replace it right away with something positive. If you don't replace it with something positive, it's not going to work. I'll give you one example out of many. When I want to get rid, if I have an urge for this cup of coffee, so I calm myself down without a cup of coffee, I will read a chapter of Tehillim. I say, okay, instead of coffee, I read a chapter of Tehillim, or two or three, or whatever I need to. As not Hashem, with this, we're going to be able to refine ourselves in a much better way, so our tshuva will be much more profound and much more powerful.